Hi, this is Guava Moment here with the results for week 7, and the ever-continuing results for week 4. I'm still getting solutions for this one, and they always look pretty cool. This was submitted by Krakor. It's not very fast, but it looks neat, and I thought I'd show that off. But on to carbon snakes. Uh, pseudo dude, if you're watching this, you might want to look away, uh, based on a comment you made last week. You'll see in a second. So one of the ways you can solve this challenge is to, well, just output the boron directly, eventually input a new carbon snake molecule, and there. You can split carbon once to create lithium, and if it's done in this way, it breaks the bond as you need it. And you gotta fuse the lithium back in, and output your carbon snakes. Uh, this was submitted by Cannibal9000, and surprisingly, this was a terrible, terrible solution. That uh, doesn't happen with, to him so often. Uh, so 24 symbols. We can get that much lower. We can add a symbol to show off added spaces solution. He also did the lithium method and just had the boron going back and forth here and this going up here. What's interesting about this is this was the fastest solution I received. The second fastest solution actually turned out to be the number one solution, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself. So let's see some, some of the good ones. Amro does a thing for only 19 symbols, where one Waldo does pretty much all of the work. He has an interesting way of using this carbon sensor here to uh, reuse some of his path here to drop that half of the carbon snake, and then come back and uh, drop it out there. You'll notice he's using the kind of uh, kind of the fission bug here, where you split, it should hit the carbon and collide, but since it gets outputted right away, or instantly, it uh, continues on working. So he gets to 19 symbols for this. This was submitted by CERN, who tells me his name is actually pronounced Cairn. He does the, as I sort of intended, fuses boron in to make sodium, and then also does the uh, split output instantly thing that shouldn't work. But uh, I designed this challenge in this way that you could solve it two ways. You could fuse a boron into this carbon to make sodium, which only has one bond, which splits this in half, uh, you do that by rotating it uh, clockwise, or you could rotate this counterclockwise to split out a lithium and solve it that way. I was pretty sure the boron way would be uh, easier for less symbols, and I was correct with that. Also, I think Saren told me that this move here, for a one-cycle delay, he called that the guava delay, which I was pretty happy with. But he also got 19 symbol solution, so it ends up a little bit faster. So this is another solution that fuses boron in and instantly outputs boron where it should have collided. So one of the reasons I made this challenge, so uh, you guys can understand that this is kind of a really neat exploit. There are a lot of levels that I think you could use this exploit on, but uh, I just have this as kind of a reminder that you could use this. So this one, with these tight loops, ends up being quite fast. This was submitted by Java Jesus, who uh, normally hasn't really been in a spitting distance of the number one solution. Do we have one better than this? Let's see... This is functionally almost completely identical to Java Jesus' solution. Just the uh, starting place, the start and the outputs are in slightly different locations, and it saves one cycle over it. However, this was my solution! So that means it doesn't count, so Java Jesus ends up with the number one solution. I'm so proud of you, buddy. Congratulations. So going back to Java Jesus' solution... That's all you needed to do to save the one cycle, but turns out you didn't need to. So the Catalyst Challenge. I really like this one. I think it's really cool. What you have to try to figure out is how on earth to extract this central atom, how to create your catalyst and reuse it. So as, you, what, as many of you figured out, you have to start off by inputting a box that you're going to create the catalyst out of, and then it's just going to be garbage sitting in your reactor the whole time. So, he, so this person eventually creates an oxygen catalyst. You have to fuse your one oxygen in, rotate this thing around. Fuse it one more time to get germanium, split it out, sulfur, split that sulfur to create your oxygen, and repeat the cycle. Now, I know this solution is actually 
Well, it's obviously very slow because red is doing literally nothing. But I wanted to show this one off because this was uh, submitted by Zach1XSW2TickTick, who's the person who actually created the original version of this puzzle. Uh, his version had a ring of nitrogen with a silicon in the middle. The math is essentially the same uh, thing. It's almost completely identical. I just thought this looked a little bit neater for first-time uh, players who have tried this. So he got to 466. Now let's see some ones that are a little bit faster than that. Now this was submitted by Halfwit. One of the things I like about these solutions is that it's, it's another one that's kind of just hypnotizing to watch because this big box just constantly rotating all over the place. And it kind of has to because since you can't rotate your fusion or fission laser symbol things here, you have to always fuse from the left to the right and then split from the right to the left. It uh, makes it a little bit awkward to have every or have the sulfur box be in the right position. So you have to spend a lot of time rotating it around. Okay, so we got to 319 cycles, but we can get much faster than that. This was submitted by Mr. Blarney. Very clever way of reusing the uh, one rotate and the fuse command to do it does it twice, so it rotates a whole bunch and fuses as it needs. Keeps the uh, symbol count low. Gets quite a bit faster. This was submitted by Cairn. There's one thing I really like that he does right here. He drops the box right on the, uh, the splitter, grabs the catalyst atom, and then outputs the big box. So that way, uh, while blue is heading back to grab the next input, Red can uh, uh, go around and regenerate the catalyst without having to worry about colliding into the big sulfur ring. I thought that was pretty cool. Because under 200 cycles. Sudodu does a thing where both red and blue do all of the work themselves, so we can kind of double pump the solution. Most uh, solutions I got had one Waldo just dealing with the catalyst and one Waldo just dealing with the sulfur ring. But here he's got red and blue both doing everything themselves. It's a very good way to speed up a solution. It's under 153. It's pretty good. This was submitted by Wild M, and this was the lowest symbol solution I received for this. Now, both Wild M and uh, Wild M and Pseudo Dude before did a uh, kind of a sneaky thing, which I'm trying to hammer home here. Drop the catalyst right there. Input and fuse at the exact same instant. So instead of a collision, the oxygen fuses into the sulfur to make the chromium. Fuse one more time and your germanium's done. After like two cycles after the input, you've uh, done half the work for your sulfur ring. So if there's one thing you can uh, take home from this from this week as your lesson, it's that you can use the the exploitation that fusion and fission bonders kind of a little bit glitchy if you do things right away. What you think should collide won't, and you can really exploit that at times. But our number one solution this week goes to our Chinese friend Alien Spore, who does the exploity fuse instant thing that should collide, and has both red and blue working parallel solutions so that they're both doing the work together to output everything. Final time, 144 cycles for the number one solution. However, pseudo dude who is never one to do things the easy way, as you saw with California Screaming, submitted this. Pseudo dude, you have a problem. Let's output all the oxygen first, he says. Okay. Let's get beryllium in here somehow. I, I don't know. Okay, helium. Now let's use exp this uh, fusey exploity thing to create a neon. So you don't even need a catalyst. You can just do this. Oh, there's, there's Argon. It also has no bonds. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, but now... No, oh, it needs another helium now, because that Argon won't work anymore. Now we've got two Argons. Well, let's fuse that into a garbage ball. Just not content with doing things the easy way. And then this goes again. He gets another Argon, fuses that into a Xenon ball. Hafnium. Oh, it needs another beryllium, so he has to do some nonsense around here. Thank God that was slow. If that was the number one solution, I think a lot of people would have been angry. But um, I want to thank you, Pseudo Dude, for trying for this. Or for trying something a little bit off the wall again. 
Well, that was week seven. There's only one more week of the open tournament and the final double points challenge. Good luck, everyone.